to St Mary Magdalene with St Martin here in Addiscombe in East Croydon. I'm Amanda the vicar. Very warm welcome to all of you who are visiting us today online and to everybody in our church family and beyond who have been coming here as regularly as you are able. You're very welcome to come and worship together this morning. We have Louisa with us who's believing our, leading our children's focus. Katie is providing our music today and Regina is here to preach. Let's just take a moment of quiet to still our hearts before we begin our liturgy together. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also, and also with, with you. you. You're going to sing, we're going to listen to you here, but you're going to sing the hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. us in our focus now. It's lovely to have you with us. Thank you for coming and for all the effort you've gone to, I can see, on that very exciting table. Thank you, Amanda. Good morning, everyone. Morning. How are you? How are you all at home? Good morning, everyone at home. So, as Amanda said, I'm Louisa, and I'm here to share with you this morning our children's focus. Now, the first thing I want you to think about children, grandchildren, 
mums, dads, grandparents, aunts, uncles, guardians, carers, do you like to build? Have a moment to think about what you like to build. When my son was younger, I used to love building um, wooden train sets. And I'd spend hours with him building all these train sets on the floor, only to have to pick them up again a few days later. And I know that my children right now will probably be on their devices building in Minecraft. I certainly left my daughter. She was building a temple. And I know my son, he loves to build these mansions with swimming pools and tree houses. And he spends loads and loads of time on Minecraft doing that. So this is something else that we've been building at home. Can you guess what it is? It's the temple. So I'm very much grateful for my daughter for building this temple. Now, the story that we're going to um, talk about today um, is a time when Jesus went into the temple. So this was during Passover, a very special celebration. Um, and in those days, the temples took about 46 years to build. So we're told, oh, this temple took 46 years to build. Without giving my age too much, that's just about how many years, um, just over how many years um, I am. So it took that long to build. And so, we can see here, we've got a lovely temple. Now, the story that we're going to talk about is this temple. And in this temple, there was a young boy, and he's narrating this story. And he says, I remember that day really well. It was nearly Passover. The temples were crowded. So you can see here, look, we've got some crowded temples full of people here. There were men, because in those days the men would go to the temple and they would sell cattle. Can you see the cattle here? They would sell the cattle. <laughs> there we go. And sheep. Who would have believed it? Susie Sheep herself, she would have been in the temple. Look, we've got two Susie Sheeps there. And doves, they were all in the temple as well. And some of the, some of the men were sitting at the table and they were exchanging money. Go, they're exchanging money. And this boy, when he's telling this story, he says to us, My goodness, the next thing we knew, Jesus was make, making a whip out of cords. Look at him making this whip out of cords. And do you know what happened? He began to drive all these animals out of the temple. Can you imagine the chaos? All these animals. He, he undid the um, cages and the doves came flying out. There were animals flying about all over the place in the temple. Do you know what he did? He even scattered all the coins everywhere. And he was so angry and he was overturning the tables. Overturning the tables and he was shouting, How? Get these cows out of here. Get these sheep out of here. Get this money out of here. He began shouting, How dare you turn my father's house into a marketplace? Goodness, he was really angry. And this... This child that saw this and was telling the story said, as I look back now, I remember that the ancient prophets had written, zeal for God's house will overwhelm me. And he said, we could see it with our own eyes. And the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? So the Jews said to Jesus, how dare you do all this? Who gives you the authority to do that? 
And Jesus said to them, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. And they laughed, of course, because it had taken 46 years to build the temple. And they said, you're going to do that? Are you going to raise the table in three days? But after the resurrection, the three days began to make sense. And when you come here on Easter Sunday and you want to hear more about why the three days make sense, then we will find out more. So, just wanted you to take a couple of minutes to think about what's special to you. What's special to you? Maybe you could say it out loud or say it to yourself. Is it a place in your room, a toy, a device? And how would you feel if your special things or your special places were destroyed? You'd feel very angry, wouldn't you? You wouldn't feel very happy. And what God wants is for us to treat ourselves as well like the special people we are. And he'd like you to treat yourself in that special way. So have a think about yourselves now. What's special to you as an individual? Maybe people say to you that you're very kind, you're very caring. Maybe you've got some special gifts. Maybe you're good at making friends. And think about those things that you want to hold on to. And especially over the next week and coming weeks, because there's some big changes ahead, aren't there? Some of you are going to be going back to school after a long time. Some of you have been at school, and it's going to be different because there's going to be more more people coming back into your school, and that will feel different as well. So maybe have a think about when somebody's told you that you've been kind to someone else, that's a really special quality. And see if you can keep that to yourself and share that with other people as you go through the changes over the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Louisa. Thank you, that was lovely. Well done, May, for making such a splendid, multicoloured temple. I'm sure Lego haven't thought of that as an example yet. Let's come before our loving Heavenly Father now to confess our sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us now confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen.
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing now, or you're going to sing together now, the hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. you father that in the stillness we can know you thank you that you reach out to heal us forgive us and restore us amen we're going to turn to the word of god now as katie brings our first reading from exodus and louisa our second reading from john and regina then speaks to us thank you the first reading is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 7. Then God spoke all these words. 
I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The reading is taken from John chapter 2, verses 13 to 21. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changes seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling these doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. We come to look at God's word. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word afresh. We pray, the Lord, that we would encounter you afresh this morning. Come by your Holy Spirit and open our hearts and our minds to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, when you buy a car from a garage, there is instruction manual that comes with it. An example of the instructions in the manual may be the kind of fuel that you are to use in the car. Now, you may feel that you don't want to be detected to and you choose to ignore the instructions and fill up your car with uh, diesel instead of petrol. I accidentally did that and uh, that didn't do the car any good. Similarly, if we choose to ignore instructions for taking our medication, we will not get better. In fact, taken wrongly, the medicine could do us some harm. Board games, washing machines, radios, all these things come with a set of instructions. These are provided so that we can get the best out of our product. It would be silly to ignore them. In the same way, God the Creator gave his people the Ten Commandments. He wanted them to live life to the full, safely and avoid problems. Now last week Amanda spoke about the covenant that God made with Abraham, promising to make him a father of many nations. So our reading from Exodus today comes at a high moment in the history of the Israelites. After the call of Moses, 
the celebration of the Passover and their eventual escape from slavery, God led his people through many twists and turns to the foot of Mount Sinai, where they stayed for some time. There, they would learn about the holiness and the power of God and how to live as God's people. Through Moses, God announces the standards known as the Ten Commandments by which the people were to live their lives. While they were not the terms of the covenant that God made with their ancestor Abraham, the Ten Commandments are a blueprint for living and they reflect God's moral nature and are given in the context of love. The principles ex expressed in these Ten Commandments are valid for all people for all times. They are stated as absolutes. We follow God's commandments not through fear, but because they are right. Each is addressed to you in the second person singular. This is because God sees individuals, not just crowds. He speaks to us on a one-to-one -one relationship, individually as members of a believing community. We cannot guarantee that others will obey these commandments, but we, as individuals, are responsible for how we respond to God. Being fully aware that our response does impact others as the body of Christ. Each commandment is relational. The first four commandments show us how to live in harmony with God, respecting God and not trivializing him, treating God's name with honor, keeping his special day special, putting God first, not worshiping other gods, such as carved images, even our own possessions can become idols. Right relationship with God comes first before right relationship with others. These standards are about how we respond to God's love by loving him. He loved us first, so we love him in return. So the first commandments aim to put right relationship with God and us. The last six commandments show us how to live in harmony with other people. We can get into trouble in our own relationship with other people, so God gave these standards to live by. Our parents, they deserve respect. Human life is valuable, so we mustn't kill. Marriage is precious, so don't take someone else's spouse. We mustn't lie to other people, otherwise trust will be broken. God gives us enough to live on, so we mustn't envy. We need to respect other people's property, respect truth and reputation for others, showing ultimate respect for holiness and by guiding our motives as well as our actions, not to covet. Respect for God and others is revealed in the choices that we make on a daily basis. We cannot violate God's commandments without harming our relationship with God and with others. These Ten Commandments are not laws given by a dictator. No, they are from a loving God, a loving Father, who wants to ensure that we get the best out of the life that he has given us. In fact, there is freedom to be gained when we live by these standards. God's law is for our own good and for the good of others. We may not be aware of the immense hurt and damage that we cause by ignoring them. In this country, we are told to drive on the left side of the road. This is for our safety and for the safety of others. 
problems arise when someone inadvertently drives up the wrong way. These commandments show us how to express the love of God and love for other people. Showing respect for God and for others in simple but very vital ways. No more significant guideline for living has ever been incorporated in any code of law. If we live by these standards, we surely please God, and our entire lives will become an act of worship. Now, does it mean that by obeying these standards, these commandments, we earn God's favor and salvation? Now, is it because of our good works that we gain eternal life? Certainly not. If we look at the Israelites, it's not obeying the law that they became God's people. God chose the Israelites not because of what they had done for him, but because of his undeserved love for them. Looking back at the beginning of our passage from Exodus, we hear these words. Then God spoke these words. I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. So the law was given well after they were delivered from Egypt. In Deuteronomy 7, we hear this again. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples. For you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your ancestors that he brought you out of Egypt with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery. God rescues, he saves his people from slavery, then he gives them the law. So it's grace and then works. This pattern is repeated throughout the Bible. Right at the beginning in Genesis, God shows his love by placing Adam and Eve in the beautiful Garden of Eden. Then he gave them instructions of how to enjoy the life he had given them. In John 15, Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you. So now, go and bear fruit. This is always the way with God. He loves us and then asks us to respond. Ephesians 2. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, lest any should boast. We see that God always starts with mercy and not our worthiness of his love. It is easy to get caught up with the idea that we do certain things and obey certain commands to gain God's acceptance. In fact, it is the other way around. We are unconditionally loved by God. The law is given in the context of love. Obedience to his law is an act of living out in that reality. We are saved for good works, not saved because of good works. Now, did Jesus come, and when he came, did he do away with the law and the Ten Commandments? You might be wondering. No. Jesus says he came not to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. And when asked which was the greatest commandment, Jesus responded in Matthew 22. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. 
and the second is like it. You shall love the, your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus distilled the law and the prophets into these two commandments because these two summarize the Ten Commandments, our relationship with God and with one another. Whilst the Ten Commandments are not the terms of the covenant, they are a blueprint for life for any follower of Christ. It is around the theme of love that the Ten Commandments revolve. Love is the thread that runs through the Bible. It is because of God's love for you and for me that Jesus came as the ultimate sacrificial Passover lamb of God. We heard him referring to the destruction of the temple in the passage that Louisa read. Jesus was referring to his death. Through Jesus' death on the cross, and his subsequent resurrection, God would fulfill his promise to Abraham to make him a father of many nations, thus bringing both Jew and Gentile alike into one family of God. Now, as we journey through this land, you may want to reflect on how God might be calling you to look afresh at how to live out the Ten Commandments at this time. Which of those four commandments relating to God might you be struggling with? Respect for God, treating his name with respect, keeping his day, special day special, putting God first, not worshiping other gods, such as career, money, fame, and so on. Our possessions can become idols. Or which one of those relating to other people might you need particular help with? Respect for parents, valuing human life, respecting marriage, respect for the property of others, respect for the truth and reputation of others, showing ultimate respect for holiness by guiding our motives as well as our actions. Ask God to shed a light on the area that he would like you to change. As you do so, remember that God gave these standards from the context of his love for you and for me, so that we can live in harmony with him and with one another. Amen. Thank you very much, Regina. We're going to sing together then, for those of you who are watching from home, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. Thank you. 
maybe at home you'd like to stand if you've been sitting for a while so that we can say the creed together. It doesn't matter if you're sitting or standing. It's just a thought you might like to move. So we declare our faith by saying together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Regina is going to lead us in our prayers and intercessions. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the privilege of gathering to hear your word each week. Thank you that you did not leave us to stumble through life, but you gave us standards that free us to live as followers of your Son, Jesus Christ. Show us where we are lacking and how we might begin to make changes so that we might live in harmony with you and with one another. We pray for your church. Lord, we have a message of hope. We have a message to share with the rest of the world, no matter what is going on. We pray for your worldwide church, that it might share, shine that light of Christ and bring hope, especially in the dark times of this pandemic. Father, we pray for the areas of conflict, and the efforts that are being made to bring about reconciliation, peace, and understanding. Father, may your kingdom come. Lord, we pray for the persecuted church and for organizations like Open Doors. Give them inspiration, courage, and the resources that they need. We pray for our government, for our Prime Minister and his government. Give them wisdom as they balance the competing needs of our nation. We pray for the health care and for all those who are working in emergency services. Give them wisdom, strength, compassion, and skill. We pray for our community here in Croydon and the businesses that have been affected by this pandemic may ways be found to rebuild this town and bring in more jobs for our community. We pray for the children and the teachers as schools open tomorrow. We ask for patience and understanding as the children readjust to life back at school. We pray for our church family, for those who are sick and suffering, we pray for Paul's continued recovery, for Marion and the family. Surround them with your peace and your love. We pray for Sue, 
and the family as they prepare to lay Bob to rest. May your love carry them through this difficult time. We pray for Mrs. Dixon. May she know your strength and your peace. We pray for Tony recovering at home and receiving care at home. We pray for your healing hand upon her. We pray for Florence recovering from COVID, strengthening her each day. We pray for the family of Enid following her recent death. We bring before you those known to us in need of your healing grace. In a moment of silence, Let's lift up to God those we know who need God's healing touch today. May these people know your healing touch upon their lives, your peace, and your comfort. Father, we pray for our queen and members of the royal family. Thank you for her majesty's example of faith. Strengthen her and give her good health. As we enter into this new week, remind us of your word which says, it is I, the Lord, who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not be fear fearful or be dismayed. Father, remind us that nothing we encounter today or this week is too difficult for you. Help us to look to you and put our trust in you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When Jesus came and stood amongst his disciples, he said to them, Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We share a sign of that peace with whoever is near us at home or if we're on our own, in our hearts with those for whom we love. Peace the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. So we come to our communion service and we'll be saying the Kyrie during this and listening to it being sung to us and then during the administration of communion we'll be listening to the song I Cannot Tell. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms for love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my body of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. 
His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we break this bread, we share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink this cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sing the wonderful hymn, Father, hear the prayer we offer. Thank you very much, Regina, for coming to share with us today. Thank you, Katie, so much for coming to play and sing so that we at home could join in. And Louisa, thank you so much for carrying the temple all the way around from Addiscombe Court Road to here. That must be a feat that's never been recorded before, but thank you. Thank you, Maeve, for building it, and from sure, Luke's lots of helpful ideas as well. And thank you to Jeremy and Andrew for all the help. We couldn't be doing this without you here today, although we can't see you. We can see you. People at home can't see you. <laughs> Notice sheets have gone out as usual, and I'm very aware that when they come out every week by email, you don't always get round to reading them, so it's quite important to highlight a few things. Now, on uh, Sunday next, it's Mothering Sunday, Sunday the 14th, and my hope is that along with many other churches in Croydon, we'll be uh, opening for in-person or live worship we see you're having live worship right now, so I'm not sure that's quite the right way of putting it, but in person means that if you want to, you can come and be present in the church building for worship. It's actually um, not a, a requirement that we close the churches at all. It was a decision I made along with Isabella um, and our standing committee. Uh, but I'm going to discuss it with the PCC in full tomorrow evening. So we will let you know formally on Tuesday what will be happening next Sunday. So look out for that notification. Whatever happens, we'd still like to be able to distribute flowers to our church family uh, from the Mothering Sunday service. And so if there are three or four people who could help with bunching them, we have enough space in the church hall and the small hall to be doing that uh, prior to the service. So could you get in touch with the church office on Tuesday? to let us know if you'd be willing to put bunches of flowers together in preparation for Mothering Sunday for those here in church and for those who will be at home. We're continuing with our wonderful times of prayer on Zoom. Um, each, of the first, uh, each of the next four days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And Wednesday isn't any longer, but we do have um, a, a Wednesday Lent reflection on the theme of wilderness at that one. 
You probably noticed by now that we have bought a new piano. It's been much needed for a long time, and Hilary very kindly took a lot of time with Tony and one or two others to research properly over the course of, would be last school term, if you like, way up before um, autumn started, what would be a good um, option at the, at the best cost price for us to purchase it. So we have it in action right now, and thank you for Katie for enabling us to hear that. You may like to make some kind of don donation towards its cost if you want to. We don't not require to, but you might like to do that um, at some point. Let us know if you would. We're going to be updating our live streaming sound system visual media desk because at the moment we cannot show anything that is video material, so recordings of songs with the words and images, any video material we would like. Plus, we do not have our own live stream camera. We are using Andrew's. Thank you, Andrew. It's been going for practically a year, I think, since next weekend. And to do that, there's a cost uh, to that, and the PCC have agreed to that. It's quite an outlay, but it's something that we are investing for the future as live streaming. I think we all know, I certainly fully believe, is here with us. It enables us to reach out further through the internet to other people who may not be able to get to church or may just enjoy worshipping through the internet. So look out for um, new... Um, new additions to the sound desk at the back and new cameras coming in once we've got the faculty for that and we've got the new little addition to the sound desk physically that we need to put in place. Thank you very much to those of you who've been making sandwiches, whole um, packets of bread, loaves of bread of sandwiches that Chris has been taking down to Nightwatch who've then been distributing it to people on the street. And he gave me a little update on that to say that he's had, I think it's seven or eight of you have been doing that, so thank you very much for that. He takes it to Nightwatch, and then I think there's about six people they found on the street who've needed sandwiches, plus they take them to those who are in need as well. So thank you for that work. It's going to continue until the end of this month. We continue to pray for Sue Ogilby and her wonderful family as they prepare for Rob's funeral, which will take place in about 10 days' time, on the 18th of March. It will be live-streamed. You'll be able to join in from home. Unfortunately, we can only have 30 people in church, and you probably realise that Rob and Sue have a very large and extensive family who will be here, as we had a funeral here on Monday as well. It works very well with 30 people here. But Sue would love you to know that you are so welcome to join in by watching it at the time or watching it later in the day or the following day if you're not able to do that. But we hold them in our prayers and in our hearts during this very difficult time. We continue to pray for Paul Young. It's so encouraging to hear the steady, maybe very slow, but steady progress he is making. And we continue to pray for Marion, for all their family, as they strengthen one another in order to encourage him as well. There are many more whom we are praying for, and please do use the notice sheet prayers, in your own prayers during the course of this week. So now we come to the blessing, and then we will hear our regular blessing song. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. <clears throat>